Hey guys, it's Friday. It's hashtag Ask Lauren. Okay, I feel like this is gonna be a long one, but I got a question um, on Twitter from Charlotte, at Charlotte Gig. She said, what do you think of the whole Asina O'Neill thing? Do you think it will really change something? And I asked her for clarification because I heard about this. I think her name's Asina, Asina O'Neill. I don't know. I don't watch her. Um, but sh this whole hashtag social media is not real, her quitting social media or something. So I'm gonna watch the video uh, on her YouTube channel and then I will answer your question. Okay, so you're probably like, how do you not know who this chick is? I mean, I've heard of her but I don't really pay attention to this kind of thing because uh, sometimes I honestly think it's stupid. Okay, so I just Googled her name, es Asina O'Neill or Essena O'Neill. Sorry, I don't know her name. Teen Instagram star hailed as revolutionary for quitting social media. Social media is not real life, right? I heard about how she like re-tagged all of her like captions to say like, this picture of her in a bikini isn't real because of this, this, and this. And then I heard some stuff about eating disorder stuff. Okay, so O'Neill exposed the dark side of social media after quitting in an emotional video. She's responded to accusations from friends that her decision to quit Instagram and YouTube was a hoax and her claims about social media influencers being miserable were fake. The 19 year old, okay, she's 19. Right away, I can't honestly take this seriously. Not because, okay, listen, not because if you're a teenager, I can't take you seriously. My automatic judgment and perception is like, I, t I tend to, I honestly don't like and I can't relate to and I can't connect with a lot of the teen YouTubers because they're too young and I'm not young and I sometimes think that this stuff isn't real. That some of the stuff they get all wrapped up in and caught up in is kind of floofy and not real. So my first thought right away is, okay, I don't think this is someone that I even want to care about or even want to know about. I'm not saying she's not smart, but my initial, I'm just telling you my initial thought to reading this. Okay. She amassed over 600,000 followers on Instagram by sharing pictures of her day-to-day -day life. She had hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube and other channels. On Wednesday, she planned to quit YouTube and Instagram in an emotional video claiming the burgeoning online presence she established had left her miserable. She recaptioned a number of images with details about the endorsements behind them and how much she had been paid to wear free dresses and outfits by companies. YouTube bloggers Nina and Randa, who O'Neill visited in LA, dismissed her claims as untrue. It hurts my feelings that she would say they're all miserable or they are all into this wealth or they are all fake, they said in a video. The pair also blamed her departure from Instagram on her breakup with her boyfriend. Guys, is this even serious? Do I even need to talk about this? Okay, the reason she is so upset and so down is because of her breakup with this guy and then she is putting all the blame on social media and saying everyone in LA is horrible and cares about fame and is depressed. That's not true. But O'Neill, who deleted her Instagram on Wednesday, insisted her decision was about wanting to be transparent, not because of her personal life on her Let's Be Game Changers website. This is about me feeling the need to constantly perfect and edit my life online. I've had these feelings about social media for ages and struggled with coming to grips with them. I want to use this spotlight to talk about veganism, environmental awareness, and body positivity. <sighs> She's now asking for financial help on her website, which she says will be devoted to issues she actually cares about. O'Neill is asking visitors to pay what they think her content is worth and has promised none of her posts will be sponsored. <sighs> That's my feeling about this. Sorry, I'm not, I don't wanna diss you Charlotte for asking the question. I think you have asked me a legitimate question. I think what we should focus on here is whether or not what she's doing, Asina, Asina O'Neill. Oh God, if I'm saying her name the whole, wrong the whole time, don't leave a bunch of comments because I don't know who this is. So the issue here is that not everybody is like this girl, okay? And not everybody has an issue with social media the way she does. And honestly, my real feelings right now, just reading that article and just knowing peripherally what this is about, is that this is a 19 year old going through like major life changes and honestly knows not that much. Like she has her one experience. If this has been her only work experience is kind of like doing nothing as we like to call it, which is just getting to share your personal life and talk about stuff on the internet, then like, She's going through the growing pains of like finding her way and what she's really meant to be doing in life. And that happens at every stage of life, but especially when you're 19, you are beyond lost. I remember thinking when I was 19 that I knew every fucking thing. I thought I was so smart. I thought I knew everything. And only in the last 
10 years of my life have I realized I know absolutely nothing. And that is the only way to approach everything is that you know nothing and what is there to learn. Okay, so I think she's just going through some growing pains. I think she's trying to figure her life out. And so she's doing these drastic dramatic things because her life is based on the internet. And the only way she knows how to find any validation is through the internet. And so she's now saying, She's not not being truthful. She's saying the truth. I'm quitting social media. This is what's been going on. And she's being very transparent. She's saying everything, which is which is great. And I'm sure it will have some kind of positive effect on people. But now we're all jumping down everyone's throats because we think that every single person on the internet is fake. And I agree that that is not true. And I think that you can play this game and you can do this and you can spread a good message and you don't need to compromise your integrity or your authenticity or your beliefs or any of these things. And you can still make Make money posting products of you in clothing and you can still make money by showing products in your cooking videos and it doesn't matter no that's how you make a living that's your business and if you don't feel like you're compromising who you are doing it then you're not compromising who you are and nobody else has the right to tell you that you are because only you know what is right for you I just got real feisty about this because I feel like not only are we accusing Asina O'Neill of certain things, but now we are accusing this whole blanket block of people on the internet who are all different, who are all out for different things and who are all out for different missions and not of all of us are the same. And I myself wouldn't even put myself in the same category as this chick. In fact, she looking at some of her stuff on the internet, like I know she doesn't have Instagram right now, but like looking at her pictures that she's been posting, these are the kind of people that I don't follow on social media because I think it's annoying. And I don't, I don't need to see a thousand pictures of you in a bikini. So I don't follow girls like this. And I think that there's a big issue with, this brings up a whole other thing of like, uh, I was reading this actually, it's funny that this came up at the same time and maybe this is why, but Kate Winslet said she's not letting her daughter or her daughters go on um, social media or Instagram because it causes eating disorders. So in my day, everybody, we had 17 magazines. <laughs> And in those magazines were pictures of girls looking cute in their bikinis exactly like Instagram. There's absolutely no difference between these pictures of Asena O'Neill. I'm just gonna say her name differently every time in case one of them is right. There's no difference between these pictures of her and the pictures that I looked at in teen magazines when I was in junior high. And in fact, I didn't look at teen magazines growing up because I was like, these are stupid. Why am I looking at these stupid magazines that show people that I don't even, I don't even know these people. I have no friends that look like this, or it's just like pictures of the popular girls in school. So why would I want to look at this? And stupid quizzes about boys. And it's like the worst kind of content, right? All it is is about boys and eating healthy, but like and it, they do cause eating disorders. Why do you think eating disorders are so rampant in this world among young girls? It's because there's all these unrealistic images of people on in which to look at. And so you need to like decide for yourself like what kind of content you are going to input into your brain. And growing up, I just did not put myself in those situations where I would have to look or feel like I had to look like those people. And I'm not saying I never thought that. I definitely thought that from one time to another, but I've never dealt with an eating disorder. So I don't wanna sound not sympathetic toward people who are dealing with this stuff. And I've, I definitely feel for you. Like I do think it's a problem. And I don't think that you should be looking at all of this kind of content on Instagram of girls in their bikinis. I don't follow anybody. If you post a picture of your abs going like this, I unfollow you because I don't wanna see that. I don't wanna see your ab photo or your like thigh gap or your like all these stupid things bikini bridge like there's so much bad content on Instagram that is like spreading the message about anorexia and bulimia that it blows my mind it makes me like actually really upset like I want to cry because why isn't that shit being censored on Instagram? It's insane. And I hope that like, yes, I post pictures of me in clothing and I'm like naturally petite and stuff like that. And like once I posted a picture of myself in my underwear, cause I was trying to be hilarious. I was like trying to be funny. And John and I posted a picture of us like brushing our teeth. We were actually like super drunk and we were brushing our teeth and it was us in our underwear because we were like, people actually put real photos of this on the internet and we were just trying to be funny. And so I hope that nobody looks at me and goes, 
I want to look like her, or I want to be skinny like her, or I want to be small. Like, I would hate if anybody thought that about me because I'm not trying to spread that message. And I, it's like, you could you can go overboard with posting that kind of content where it looks like that's all you care about. Like, if she posted more pictures of other things, that would be fine, except every picture is like her in like a crop top or her in like a bikini or her in something showing her cleavage. And like, those are clearly the things that are important to you. I would just hate for anybody to look at me and think that like, that's the shit I care about, because it's not. And yeah, I've posted pictures of me in a bikini too when I was in Costa Rica and I got a free bikini and it was like worth like what, 200 bucks? And I posted it because I liked the bikini and I wanted to take a cool beach photo. And it's like, we all have these sort of desires to want to put photos like that on the internet. And I think that that's fine. Like, I don't think anybody should be saying you shouldn't post photos like that the same way I'm saying you shouldn't post ab photos. But I do think that some of these photos, like these photos like this, this is like, this to me is promoting like not something healthy. This picture right here. Okay, why do we care what your abs look like? So that's where I have an issue. So I don't even know what question I'm getting into right now from Charlotte, because now I'm really upset. But um, do we think it will really change something? What, what is she trying to change? Is she trying to get people to admit that they're getting paid to post photos? Because we're getting paid to post photos sometimes, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it depends on the intention behind it. I think it depends on whether or not it feels right for you and whether or not your audience is gonna see through it or not. And clearly her audience was eating this shit up. Like, so what's she supposed to think? If people are liking it and people are demanding it, then you get wrapped up and sucked into doing it more because people want it. So then it comes down to the users of YouTube and Instagram and making a choice as to what you wanna support and what you wanna see. <sighs> I still haven't watched your video, so let's go watch this friggin' video. I don't know what she's trying to change. What is she trying to change here? I think it's just like, do what's right for you, but like it might not be right for everyone. And why is everyone jumping to conclusions about this now because some real girl from Australia is talking about it. Like, the Kardashians get paid tons of money to post photos and nobody cares and everybody watches their show and everybody reads gossip magazines and wants to know what's going on in their life. So it's like, if you care about that stuff and you are purchasing those things because someone told you to and you're consuming all this media that's focusing on that stuff, then what are people supposed to do? There's clearly a demand for it. Cena <sighs> O'Neal. Look, the, fir the first thing that comes up when I put her name in YouTube is Asina O'Neill thigh gap. I think she has dealt with eating disorders, hasn't she? And so she probably, I'm just making assumptions here, I don't know. She probably needs to quit doing this because it is perpetuating all of her terrible negative thoughts about herself. And so this is good for her because now she can take a break, step away and think about who she really is and what she really wants and what's really important to her. And I don't think that you can do that by 100% living through the internet because you're right, it's not real. And how are you supposed to like know who you really are if you don't know who you really are outside of this screen? <sighs> how do I find her video? She's not even coming up. Does she not have a YouTube channel anymore? This is my last ever post on YouTube. I haven't told you why I'm really quitting. There's so much I want to say and there's so many topics that I want to cover. I have an insight into a world of social media that I believe not many people are aware of in terms of how it works in advertisements, how I know a lot of other social media personalities, just how fake it all is. And I say fake because I don't think anyone has bad intentions. I just think they're caught up in it like I was. Okay. I'm glad that she, I don't know if she posted lots of YouTube videos before or what she did. I saw that she had some like what I ate in a day stuff. Okay, so I'm glad that she posted this like why I'm really quitting social media video and she, it, you know, she's being herself. She's actually saying how she feels. She's letting all of these insane thoughts run through her head and she's crying and she's saying them and that's real. That's not not real. And sh this is one person sharing their story and hopefully other people will see that story and maybe it will, um, reinforce things and make them feel, you know, it'll reinforce things that they've already been feeling. If you are 19 or 16 or 23 or 30 and, you know, living through social media and counting your numbers every day and spending hours on photo shoots to post on Instagram, and maybe you haven't felt quite right about it for a while, maybe now Asena O'Neill's video will make you question things and make you come to reality or make you realize something about yourself that you didn't know before. But I guess my issue is that not everybody who is running a business on the internet or running a business through social media is Asena O'Neill. 
Asina O'Neill. What the hell is her name? She said it herself. <laughs> Not everyone is her. Not everybody has the same story. She clearly, you know, like she said, she spent 14 to 16 wanting to be that person. And then she got what she asked for, but it is not who she's meant to be. And so now she's having this breakdown about it and questioning it as she should, because it's not who she truly is. It's not her authentic self. She's realized this is not my authentic self. I guess I can only speak to this in a way that relates to what I'm doing. And right now, like watching her video, I don't relate to her. Like I don't have the same story. I don't have the same feelings about social media. I understand that there's a lot of like what she's been doing for the last couple of years on social media and I don't look at it. I don't want to look at that stuff. And you have the choice to go and find the content that is, um, has more substance to it. If you want to label it as that, whatever, like you can look at whatever you want on the internet. If what you're looking at on the internet is making you feel bad, don't look at it. Um, so, the idea, okay, and I guess maybe maybe for younger people watching, like, they don't know that, like, these idols that they look at on the internet or that you're looking at on the internet are being paid to post. But I guess from my perspective and having left television and come into doing online content, I knew that you could make money doing it, and that's why I'm actually doing it. Um, the only reason I got social media in the first place when I worked at Much Music was to build a profile to potentially one day make money from it. Because I knew that that was a viable career path uh, that I could have after television. As television was going to eventually dwindle as it is, I was like, uh, you know, long term, I was like, oh, I could just jump into online content once I build a following. Once I have this platform that I have now of all these people watching me on television, now I can go and use it online. You know, I think I've built a really cool community of people and I think that by doing YouTube, I'm like sharing interesting information and maybe it's this is just different for me from my perspective because I'm in my 30s and I've lived a little more and I also lived half of my life and majority of my life without the internet and maybe that gives me a different more sensible um, perspective on things I don't I can't even speak to what it would be like to be a teenager now I actually it would fucking suck to be honest I think that there's a lot of cool stuff and cool reasons to be a teenager now but I think that I am very grateful and thankful that I didn't grow up with the internet and the amount of social pressure that there is now. I think, I, I think it's all relative. I think that the pressure you feel as a teenager is the same no matter what generation you are in, but I do think there's a lot of other exterior factors that weigh into your self-esteem more so in this decade than the decade that I was born in. So. I guess the sorry the question that Charlotte asks is do you think it's really going to change things and I don't know really what you mean by that if you mean like is it going to make other people be more transparent about what they're posting on Instagram or whatever maybe but I will say that it's already like I already know that it's a business and when I post I put hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored or hashtag paid on my photos because I'm getting paid to post them and it, everyone actually is required to do that. That is F FTC, is that what they're called? In the States, that's the, um, you have to, like it's, it's now like legal things um, that you have to put on your photos. And so I know there's a lot of people and probably young people who don't even know that, who aren't doing that, but your account could actually get taken down, I think, if you don't do that. Because it's the same regulations that there are for like traditional advertising um, or product endorsement applies to the internet as well. And maybe people are taking liberties with it right now and trying to sneak it in and trying to like not let their fans know that they're getting paid, but why not? Why not just, what is the pro? I mean, I guess I just have no, I don't feel like I'm a sellout. I don't feel like I'm shameless. I feel like this is my business. This is what I'm doing. I think everything I'm doing is mostly positive and if not all positive, it feels right for me. It sits right with me. When something doesn't sit right with me, I say no to it. I don't say yes to every opportunity that I get paid for. And a lot of stuff that I do isn't paid for. So I know we had this whole discussion of I'm not doing shit for free anymore, but like obviously me doing these videos where I just talk to you about something, these aren't paid but I got paid for some other thing. And that's what I mean is like, maybe that other thing I got paid for equates to me getting paid for five days of work overall. And so I would consider this still to be paid work, even though for this particular time that I'm shooting right now, I'm not being paid. I'm not like on the clock and no one's, I'm not charging anyone for it. But 
And I think in my case, I've been very upfront and transparent about this from the day one. I think, you know, you, if you followed Hot For Food uh, from the beginning, then you would have seen the exact one when we had a sponsored video and there was no hiding that sponsorship. You flat out say this video is in partnership with XX brand and there's been no fallback from that. And it's just, it is just the way it goes. And I don't see, there's no issue to me. There's no problem with that's how it works. That's how it works. That that's what we're working with. That's what we're doing. We're doing all we can to work with the model happening right now. And the internet moves fast and it's going to change in another year. And it's going to change in another two years. And maybe there will be like a social backlash of like consumers and users saying, I refuse to follow anyone who pays for, who gets paid for content. But, but why? Like, why? Advertising is all around us, like everywhere, not just on the internet, but everywhere. And so what are you fighting against? You still have a choice as a consumer as to what you want to purchase and where you want to give your money based on whether you think it's an ethical company, this, that, and the other thing. So it's up to you. Like, don't complain that somebody else is like doing something that offends you because you have the choice to turn it off or look away or unfollow or whatever you want to do. So. And if I had every video on this channel paid for by somebody, would you not watch it? Like, what if it was just exactly the same content, but every video, what if my whole, I'm just saying, what if my whole channel was sponsored by, I don't, I don't know, a, uh, a what? A, I'm trying to think of something that's relevant. But I'm just saying, like, I, I think it's interesting and I'm really fascinated by this new model of advertising, by this new model of digital content. And um, it, I think, that it actually gives us as creators and you as subscribers or your, I mean, most subscribers and followers are also content creators. I think that um, we have the power. We have the power. I don't think the brands have the power. I don't think the advertisers and the people with the money have the power. And maybe yes, Asina O'Neill was in situations where she was being told, hold the water bottle like this and that and the other thing, but it doesn't have to be that way. And I think maybe with more experience, you can, um, have more uh, ability to put your foot down because in my situations it really is there's a little bit of like we would love you to say this and we would love you to do this uh and sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't and if it doesn't feel right and it feels like we're plugging something or it feels cheesy or it feels stupid then we don't do it i think it's also a work in progress and like you'll try something and maybe it won't work you'll try something maybe people will think it was stupid but you just do something different the next time i just don't think i think it's very fluid now i don't think it's so black and white when it comes to um, content and advertising and brand partnerships. And I really believe in it. I actually really think this is like a revolutionary way to uh, be an entrepreneur. I think it's a revolutionary way to be in control of the message that you wanna put out into the world. And I don't live through social media. Like, yes, I spend most of my days creating content, but like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm compromising a life because I work on the internet or because I'm a YouTuber. And I questioned it a lot at the beginning and I made sure this was what I wanted to do. And maybe in a year, maybe two years, five years, 10 years, maybe I won't, obviously I won't do this for my whole life. My career will change and evolve just like Asina O'Neill's career is a change, changing and evolving and she's questioning herself and wondering what, uh, what she should do next and she's lost and she's confused and she doesn't know. So it's good that she's not on social media now because she can take a break and figure her shit out. And I don't mean to like, I'm not, I, I love this. Like I love this video she posted, but I mean, this is her thing. So don't blanket apply everything she said now to everybody you watch on the internet and decide for yourself. You're a smart individual. You decide for yourself is what I'm looking at authentic is what I'm looking at. What I want to be looking at is what I'm looking at ultimately, you know, spreading positivity or ultimately helping me in my life in a good way, not in a way that makes me judge myself and makes me feel like shit. So that's it. Thank you very much, Charlotte, for getting me going, get me all fired up here. Um, and please leave some comments uh, below and let me know your thoughts and how you view this kind of stuff because you out there watching my channel right now have been on YouTube far longer than me and you consume a lot more content than I do. You're making choices every second as to what you wanna watch and support on the internet. And so far I've had lots of really cool people here saying they like what we're doing, they like the stuff I'm talking about, it's helping them. And that's really all I want, it's just a place for sharing. I actually think this is an amazing place. If you can share great stuff here and you're entertaining, all I wanna do is talk and share and entertain. That's all I want to do. I'm not like, I want to change the world. If, you know, if I change people's lives because I inspire them to go vegan, amazing. You know, those are all goals on the spectrum of what I want to do. Um, and 
as I said, you know, with this idea of not working for free anymore, of course I want to make money doing this. This is my job now. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I also don't think that I need to justify it right now to you, but I'm just explaining myself because you're going to ask all kinds of questions. So I think I'm just going to stop talking right now because I'm just going to repeat myself and ramble. And anyways, I don't know how or why all of a sudden my subscribers have gone up a lot more. I think it might be these what I ate in a day videos. And I know you guys like what I ate in a day videos, but I actually just want to say this right now. I don't want to become the what I ate in a day channel. Um, there's so much more that I want to play with and experiment with on here. But for some reason, what I ate in a day, I guess, is a popular search term. And so maybe it's coming up in recommended stuff. But I also have seen how what I ate in a day videos kind of perpetuate eating disorder type stuff. And that is not what I'm trying to do with mine. I'm really trying to just say, you know, take control of your body and your mental state and, you know, build up your self-esteem however you can, eat whatever you want, you don't need to be so hard on yourself, and all of those things. And I, I hope that that's coming through, I hope that that's what you're getting from those, because I've just now, because other people have approached me and said, check out my What I Ate In A Day videos, this and that, they're honestly the videos that I hate. It's like I ate seven bananas and I ate this many things and all of it was like, full of water and vitamins and no fat and no protein and like I am not gonna do that and I'm not gonna tell I don't I'm not trying to tell you how to eat you can do whatever you want but like I'm just telling you what I stand for and what I believe in and the kinds of stuff I want to support and I don't want to support what I ate in a day videos that kind of border on orthorexia which is healthy eating disorders it's people who are so obsessed with eating raw and vegan that they are actually, they actually have an eating disorder because they're so obsessed and this is a control issue. And I don't, I'm not a doctor and I don't want to speak about eating disorders, but like if you're going through that kind of stuff, you need to seek professional help and you need to get off the internet because that shit is perpetuating um, the way you feel about yourself. And so if you don't feel good watching it and you don't, then don't watch it. That's just as easy as that. And I don't want to be insensitive. I definitely feel for you if it's something you've gone through in the past or you're going through now, but I don't want to become, I don't want to give advice on this because it's not my topic to give advice on. So that's all I just wanted to say about what I ate in a day videos. Okay, I'm a little worked up. I need to go now. Okay, goodbye everybody. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing and for supporting what I'm doing here. And uh, I will not be quitting social media anytime soon. Okay, thanks, bye.